Good morning and welcome back to World Skills Barbados competition. This is day two of the competition. Yesterday we had an action pack competition. Trust me, the cooking was on point. Everything went well yesterday. We had the restaurant service. I trust me, I had a few drinks yesterday on the bar module, whiskey sour, I had cosmopolitan, and I also had a shot of my first ever Bloody Mary. Trust me, it was fantastic yesterday. However, today, we are going to start with hairdressing. Yesterday, they did the ladies' catwalk design with a session styling, and we have another module this morning. So I'll come back to you shortly. We're going to speak to an expert in hairdressing. I am only able to cut the hair off my head, and I'm balding as well, so I'm probably not doing it correctly. So I'll come back to you in a few minutes and we will be able to speak to someone who can tell you about hairdressing. My name is Kendra Mears. I am 20 years of age and I am competing in the hairdressing category. I represent the Barbados Vocational Training Board. My program of studying is cosmetology. I am in two years of three years apprenticeship. I enrolled in this area of study because I wanted a certificate in cosmetology. I learned about a competition by attending a previous one in 2018. I decided to enter because I think it would be good for me as a person and to help me in my career achievements. The preparations has been going okay up until COVID-19. It has put my training in halt and affected the hours that I had to train. The competition in the program helped to enhance my skills with how I interact with people, my confidence in doing so, and just helping me to build my awareness of what I am doing and my career goals. I see myself performing with an equal chance as any of the other competitors, since that I have been also following the guidelines that were given to me. My plans for after the rare skill competition is to finish, pursue my studies in cosmetology. My future career goals are to be a manager and own my own salon. The competition has assist for me to reach these goals because they have helped me to build my interaction with people, it helped me to develop skills that I didn't know I can, that can help me in my business. My advice to those participants would be to look up previous competitions and to follow the guidelines given because it could be of much help. 
world skills for young and proud visions. World skills, world skills, creativity and innovation. World skills, world skills, and ship our world class workforce to be leaders in all we do. Building up our economy, Barbados, we will improve. World skills, 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 world skills. And welcome back, World Skills Barbados 2020. We are here by the hairdressing competition. We have two competitors in hairdressing, one from the Barbados Vocational Training Board, that's Kendria Mears, and one competitor from the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology, that's Rachel Jones. We have about 10 minutes left in this module. Um, one of the competitors has already completed her um, style today. I'll give you a recap on what we did yesterday, and I'll ask my colleague, Alicia Seeley, who is actually a skill manager, to tell us exactly what the module was yesterday that the competitors had to complete. Good morning, Dario, and good morning, everyone. Yesterday, we did the ladies' catwalk design, and that module was for an hour and 20 minutes. And today, we're going to be doing the ladies' hair updo session, and that is for an hour and 35 minutes. Thank you, Alicia. So yesterday, an hour and 20 minutes this morning, an hour and 35 minutes, they're actually using the same mannequins that we used yesterday to do this, this style. What I'll tell you is that Barbados has medaled twice at World Skills Americas, and those two medals were actually in hairdressing. In 2012, we had Akila Jones, who won a silver medal in hairdressing, and Rukaya Clark had a bronze medal, sorry, in 2014 in Colombia, World Skills Americas. So there are high hopes resting on the shoulders of Kendria and Rochelle here to see who will represent Barbados at the next World Skills Americas or World Skills International competition. What I will do now is I will ask my colleague Maxine Thomas to give us a little insight on what is really required or what is what skills are involved in this ladies session, ladies styling catwalk, sorry. Hi, good morning, Dario. With this catwalk session, you want to see creativity and you want to see movement of the hair. You want to see that the student, the, the, the participant is moving the hair and is able to bring out the style that they are seeing in the photo. They're usually given a photo to do the style and then they are supposed to then interpret the, the style and carry and then execute the style. So kind of if I downloaded a picture online and I said, you know what, to my hairstylist, I want to have this this hairstyle and, and inspirational wish is what they call it? Yes, yes, it's an inspirational wish. So it's what inspires the, 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 the wearer to, to choose this style and then for the, 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 the um, person who's doing it, then to interpret and, and carry it out. Okay, so you, you spoke about shaping the hair and, and so on. What, what skills are involved in, in, in this one? There's no, no coloring or cutting? No, there's no coloring or cutting, but they can enhance the hair by, by using ornaments. And what skill, there's a lot of finger dexterity in this, in this um, type of styling and a lot of creativity in terms of imagination. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Maxine, for that. Right, so you heard it from the expert. Um, as I said before, um, I'm a little challenged on top, but here I just take off all and that's it. But those of you who know better, such as Maxine Thomas, who has actually been with World Skills Barbados from the first competition, she actually went to World Skills Americas as a team leader, along with Akila Jones for the competition. Now, as I look around and I see some familiar faces, I would like to speak to the coach for one of the competitors, Ms. Trisha Brathwaite from the Barbados Vocational Training Board. And she fights with her mask a bit here. <laughs> it's okay. Good morning, how are you? Hi, good morning, Dario, I'm fine, thanks. Okay, so just tell me a bit about the preparation, how you went about your um, training with Kendria for the competition. Well, for the competition, we would have started, the competi started our training from last year. And all during the time of shutdown, Kendra was allowed to take home her mannequin to practice, to reinforce the skills that she would have previously learned while in training in the classroom, in the lab. So you would have had online sessions where Kendra would have had the mannequin at home and you would have been at home and you all were on Zoom or whatever and practicing. So she would have had guided, she would have guidance in how to approach her practical 
um, the practical work she had to do for the competition. So during the lockdown, you would have used the technology to ensure that you were able to continue practicing and make sure that Kendria was ready for the competition. Yes, technology was in force. We would have used technology in means of um, the computer and also from WhatsApp videos and stuff, YouTube and stuff. She was able to view tutorials and stuff and show me the demonstrate. And I would be able to demonstrate to her how to perform a particular tasks and stuff. Okay. All right. So just a word on how confident are you for the competition with Kendria? Well, I am very confident and whatever Kendria, or whatever Kendra does in the competition. I'm very proud of her and I'm very proud of the effort and the dedication and stuff and she's very tenacious. So I'm very proud of whatever she accomplishes here today, our skill and the experience. Thank you very much, Trisha. All right. Trisha would have told me over the last few months that Kendra is extremely, extremely talented and that she has a fantastic attitude. So we're looking out for big things from Kendria and the Barbies Vocational Training Board. Um, Rochelle is still completing her module. We still have a few minutes to continue. But also here with me, I have Mr. Henderson Eastman, the Executive Director of the TVET Council, who I would like to ask a few questions. Mr. Eastman? You have your mask. Hi, Mr. Eastman. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I am great, yes. All right, so Mr. Eastman, this is our fifth World Skills competition. Um, could you tell me um, why, you, why TVET Council has continued to invest in World Skills Barbados, and what do you think World Skills Barbados can do for Barbados? Well, World Skills is just not only a competition. World Skills is research in technical education. World Skills is capacity building. World Skills is networking. We plan to leverage all three of those to move our technical capacity to the highest level. Right now it is at level, mostly at level two. We are working on level three, and we hope to have level four, which is equivalent to degree level programs implemented within the next two, three years. And the council is working on that. We are working with some consultants to develop some applied degree programs. Right now we are looking at animation and agriculture as the first. And once we find a way forward, we will we will go forward. We work on projects. Any money spent with projects, we gain from projects, we will plow back into the system to build capacity in institutions so that we can deliver. We recognize, and uh, COVID has shown us, that we can't only depend on tourism. We have to do more in the creative industry. We have to do more in manufacture. We have to do more in agriculture, the high-end agriculture so that we can bring foreign exchange. Now, right now, our hotels are shut down. There's no real foreign exchange coming in. If we had manufacture going, we could still export. If we had high-end agricultural products, we can cut down on the food bill, which is plenty hundred millions. So in, uh, you defer, diversify your economy first to having a workforce that can do diverse things and that is where we are pushing our technical education to the highest level you've been to world skills abu dhabi and world skills kazan and you've seen what the rest of the world is doing yeah. in terms of their um skills competition and in terms of tvet um what do you think we need to do here extra um partnerships um, what you think from industry that we need to ensure that our people get the same opportunities? Well, we need to deepen the partnership with industry. We need to develop new industrial sectors. How we do that is something else. We'll have to do that through the partnership with World Skills and other outside agencies. We have done a lot of training through World Skills, and that training is free through the networking. And several of the institutions benefit. We are going to continue that. And we're going to continue to build partnerships with outside agencies to bring new technologies, new way of doing things. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to develop the technology. Technologies are out there. We need to know how to get it here, adapt it, contextualize it, and use it to our best advantage. Thank you very much, Mr. Eastman. All right. So, again, we're here at the Here Addressing Competition. A few more minutes, as you can see behind me, Rochelle is putting in her ornament. I don't want to speak too loudly to disturb her. Um, she's really winding down with that. 
We are going to show you some highlights from cooking later. They are doing a skill test with cooking as well. Restaurant service, this coffee smells fantastic. I am going to tell you there is an Irish coffee that they have to do that will be a little spirited that I need to see what, it, what it's like. We will be back in a bit to give you some more highlights. Thank you very much and stay tuned. The World Skills Barbados 2020, day two. My name is Rachel Jones. I'm 20 years old and I'm competing in the hairdressing skills aspect of World Skills Barbados. I'm representing the SJPI institution. I am pursuing my diploma in cosmetology. I chose to pursue this area of study because I, it's my passion. I love to do hair and anything related to beauty really intrigues me. How did you learn about the World Skills Barbados 2020 competition and why did you choose to enter this year? I first knew about the competition while I was pursuing my associate's degree in culinary arts. That's when I was aware that there was a competition. After that, I came to the SJPI and my tutor then um, wanted to know if I would want to be a volunteer for the World Skills competition. That's when things really started to kick off. My training and preparation is going okay. We have been looking at different aspects from the modules to prepare for the World Skills competition. But currently, due to the circumstances that are happening worldwide, COVID-19, as we know, things were halted a little bit, but I still pressed through and we're still able to get my training in for the competition. Working in the competition has allowed me to not only get the practical aspect of the hairdressing um, in order, but also it has helped me with my time management. It has helped me to communicate with others and also to work in a time frame that is suitable for competition. I see myself performing really, really well. Um, I believe that I have put in a lot, no, I believe, I know I have put in a lot of work and I am very confident and I'm very excited my chances of meddling are very, very high. I am ready and I am rearing to go for the competition and I'm ready to take on whatever comes my way. After the World Skills competition, if I am successful, then the next step would be to go international, the World Skills International competition. But if that is not the chance, I am still going to be uh, pursuing my career, still going to be training, and still going to be advancing my skills. I actually want to have my own business salon and spa, but I want to also not only start here in Barbados, but really branch myself out um, to the region and hopefully international in the years to come. What advice would you give for those seeking to enter the World Skills Barbados competition in the future? My advice would be to work hard, pursue your dreams, and don't let anyone stop you from going after what you really, really want. And that's in life, not even in your own career. World skills for young and proud visions. World skills, world skills, creativity and innovation. World skills, world skills, and ship a world class workforce today. Be leaders in all we do. Building up our economy, Barbados, we will improve. World skills, 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 world skills.
world skills, world skills. Hello everybody, it's time to go and check out that new outfit that you'll be wearing to the clothing ceremony. We're going to check out the fashion design technology competition at World Skills Barbados 2020. <laughs> Two, two, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, good. Yeah, okay. Well, while we're waiting on them, right, yeah, so you were here yesterday as well? I was no. looking for you, but mm -hmm. I was like, I was, I was just talking to people this morning that were with them. Oh, you're in Sacramento. Welcome to Fashion Technology of the World Skills Barbados Competition 2020. I'm here with Colette Lowe. She's the coach for our competitor, Zabriel Masaya. Excuse me. <laughs> right, so welcome, Colette. And let's do a quick recap of yesterday. What modules did we go through and, and how did it go? All right, Zabriel would have covered yesterday um, in this morning session, illustration drawing and that will outline her understanding of clothing, how they should fall, how they should look, how they should be represented on paper. And then in the afternoon session, they went into the drafting of a pattern and also the layout of the fabric. Now the drafting of the pattern will look at her skill area with understanding how to construct um, from a paper pattern and taking that pattern onto the fabric and looking at the lay. And in the lay meaning, use of um, the fabric, not being able to waste the fabric, and making sure that all the pieces are on the straight grain. This is a very critical part when it comes to making garments. Um, so the judges would be looking for those, especially those specific areas. And what can we expect to see today? What, what module are we covering? All right, so today the module we are looking specifically now at a, a jacket and they would have certain stylings that they were looking for a jacket because there was a ballet, so she would have pulled something, whether it has to be asymmetrical or symmetrical. Um, looking at, looking at, looking at, um, looking at um, the asymmetrical or symmetrical, sorry, <laughs> lost my thoughts there for a moment. And also looking at the style of color, so there's a selection of colors that she, she would end up choosing from. Um, pocket and then that will go into the construction in terms of the length of jacket, length of sleeves, all these directions she would have been given. So she will come up um, with her pattern piece which she's working on right now um, pertaining to that and then she will have to um, cut out that and then bring it into construction in terms of sewing later on today between today and tomorrow. Okay so for those of us who are not in fashion who are not designers what is she going to produce at the end of the day and then give me a sense of what will she be expected to produce at the end of the four days okay um well specifically for today her the judges will not be looking at the pattern aspect of it because that would have been done from another from the other module um yesterday but primarily they're looking at her interpretation of the use of um from the ballet that she would have pulled 
to to make sure she has something that is it's this argument for sake she said she had pull asymmetrical look so in her detail of her um, jacket they must be able to see something that represents that um, the style of color that she would have chosen the t style of pocket that she was chosen and, make sh and to make sure also that she can follow instructions because within this industry um, if you're going to be working for any any fashion house or any um, aspect of man, uh, manufacturing or production, you have to be able to take, uh, follow those instructions. Um, <laughs> so the aspect that she's working on now is developing that, um, that jacket through pattern making. And then she would have to do another lay and cut so to make sure that the lay is cut correctly so that if the lay isn't cut correctly, the jacket is not gonna hang on the human body in the way it should be. And on top of that, then they're going to look at the construction, so how it is made up. And again, technical skills have to come in to understand how to sew, how to put it together. So when you come to fit it on the person, that everything falls into the place as it should fall, as it should hang on the person's body, or it should lay on the person's body. Um, and that will kind of roll over to tomorrow because she has to cover, I think, 12 and a half hours between today and tomorrow to be able to do that. But this particular module. So you're saying this module is 12 and a half hours? Yes. Wow, that sounds like a lot. It does sound like a lot. Um, but do recall that she's, she's drafting um, the pattern and then she has to do a layer she's cutting out and then from that she has to do in the construction. So there are three major elements that will come into play there, um, three skill areas that have to come into play there that she will be executing in the 12 and a half hours. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, I'm rolling over into tomorrow. Um, the last part she's going to be doing is draping. Now, draping is another form of making a pattern, but rather than a paper pattern doing on a cutting table, this now you use a mannequin and you use the fabric and you manipulate it on the fabric, on the mannequin, um, but not mannequin, let me, correct word would be bus form. <laughs> um, mannequin for those who are not so au fait. Like, like me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that now is another aspect of um, pattern making, but it's done on the bus form. And the fabric there will be manipulated to create a, a, a jacket address. What again, whatever the, um, the assignment is that the judges will present to her, she'll have to follow those instructions and be able to work on that tomorrow. Okay, so a little bit about you. How long have you been in industry? How long have you been working in this area? If I said, I would tell up my age. <laughs> For those of us, it gives a sense of, you know, like your expertise. And, and you're... No, nah, it's okay. I've been in this um, business over 30-something 30, 30 years. Um, I love it to death. Um, there's nothing like it for me. Um, it's very artistic. And there's in this profession, which a lot of people, I think, are not aware of, that there are different avenues or professions within this that you can, you can attain. Um, so not everybody will be the fashion designer, but there are pattern makers, there are um, cutters, there are persons who, when it comes to mass production from a uh, manufacturing point of view, can input um, designs into the computer that will allow the pattern making process to come out on a plotter. So th there are so many different avenues. There's uh, fashion merchandising, which is another, another area. So there are so many skill areas. Um, that can come into this that even in Zabi's case within this competition can help guide her to go into different avenues um, so she can be being exposed to all of this would help her at some stage to recognize where her passion where her love falls and you know where she can take her career going forward but um, initially you would need to learn all these different areas to be able to find out where your strong parts your strong points are so that you can grow and develop in that direction so what we would say at the TVET Council Barbados, and as you know, TVET Council is responsible for managing the World Skills Barbados program and the competition. We always say that the basis is it starts with education and training. Yes. And for us, technical and vocational education and training is really where you combine the academic and the practical learning. Yes. So Zabi is being prepared to go into a career in, is the correct term fashion or should we say the garment industry? How do you describe that? Um, well, there are two components to that. <laughs> fashion, I believe, is the, the heart or the soul around everything where a garment is concerned. And normally when we think fashion, we think designing. Um, and it, within the designing, there are 
we can bring it down to somebody in terms of like being a seamstress, or we can take it to the higher point where it could be somebody that deals with couture, somebody that specializes in a particular, a particular area. Um, but the other aspect of it, which you mentioned just now, um, you said what well, you had asked me if it was um, well, fashion so or, exactly. or you call it, you said garment, we, garment making, right? Exactly. So we talk about fashion, but trying to get a full sense of Right. So bringing it back into um, garment making, um, that tends to fall in the category, I believe, more so from a manufacturing point of view. Because in the manufacturing um, arena, there are still some guidelines um, that they can't get too overly um, dramatic in terms of style lines because when you're looking at the production costs, um, that wouldn't work. So they usually have to break down the, the garment in a way that makes sense at cost level. Uh, for, from from a managed fat frame point of view, so garment making will fall in into that category. Okay, so is that where you get your more ready to wear clothes that say we would wear every day? Yes. Right. But when you're talking about your high end, you say couture. Yes. Right. Yes. You're talking more than about the fashion. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah in terms of one-off piece, something that is really unique. You you know different. You're not going to see many out on um, on the street. But when you think about um, the ready to wear, the mass production, you can have you know, thousands of those being distributed at different locations all over the world. Um, but the couture pieces, you tend to see a very selective few that might wear those couture pieces. Okay, so that brings me then to Barbados' industry, because some might argue, oh, Barbados doesn't have a fashion industry. But the way you break it down, you're talking about fashion and then you have garment making. What would you say with regards to our industry? What does our industry look like? And for the young Zabbies out there who are looking to come into our industry, what are the tips that you can give them in terms of career choices and your path? Um, first, let me just say that um, within Barbados, our industry is always developing. Um, we have a long way to go, in my opinion, um, but it is developing. We need to understand the industry itself more. And I think a lot of persons coming out of schools need to recognize whether it is that they want to do the um, fashion in terms of design point of view or they want to get into the manufacturing. I don't think a lot of them focus on the manufacturing component of it. And then I, there's a strong merge for for manufacturers to also recognize the importance that designers can play in the in manufacturing company. You know, I know in the past we had a good um, aspect of manufacturing, but it has dwindled and, and maybe there are very few out there. But the economic situation might have caused that to happen as well. But I believe at this time, this is a time for us to start building back and, you know, and get in there. So I believe our industry can grow, um, especially because now we can, in, from an educational point of view, help our students to understand that there are different entities and different areas that they can go in and they're not stagnant into one particular area. Um, if we can get that across, then we can get the mindset in that direction. The other thing that I think is really critical and missing from our educational system totally is the understanding of business and money. I think there's something that we need to really get into um, our, our schools and let it filtrate out all the way to the tertiary, um, tertiary level education um, where we can help those students who really want to get into business understand the business component and understanding how to handle money. So I agree with you there because um, what I can say is um, during my years at the TVAC Council, and like you, I don't want to give away the number, <laughs> but that's one of the things that we realize um, that doesn't really happen here. We segment out areas um, so you will find that you have business students. They're doing business subjects and business studies, but it doesn't always um, go hand in hand with the more technical and practical courses. But anyway, we have two more days of competition so yeah. you and I will speak again Great. we're here at fashion technology that's the skill area that we're at right now and this is the second day of the world skills Barbados 2020 competition join us stay with us we'll be here until November 22nd
skills for young and proud visions. World skills, world skills, creativity and innovation. World skills, world skills, and ship our world class workforce to be leaders in all we do. Building up our economy, Barbados, we will improve. World skills, 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 world skills for young and proud visions. World skills, world skills, creativity and innovation. World skills, world skills, and ship our world class workforce to be leaders in all we do. Building up our economy, Barbados, we will improve. World skills, 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 world skills for young and proud visions. World skills, world skills, creativity and innovation. World skills, world skills, and ship our world class workforce to be leaders in all we do. Building up our economy, Barbados, we will improve. World skills, 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 world skills for young and proud visions. World skills, world skills, creativity and innovation. World skills, world skills, and ship our world class workforce to be leaders in all we do. Building up our economy, Barbados, we will improve. World skills, 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 world skills for young and proud visions. World skills, world skills, creativity and innovation. World skills, world skills, and ship our world class workforce to be leaders in all we do. Building up our economy, Barbados, we will improve. World skills, 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 world skills. World skills, world skills, world skills. Hi. And welcome. Can you smell it through your computer screen or your TV? That's a cooking competition at World Skills Barbados 2020. Come, let's go. They will only be given this yesterday. They will only know yesterday what they're going to be cooking is chicken. So, yeah. Ch right, chicken. And but, um, so they have to produce today a plate, four plates of chicken. And the four plates must be identical. And on that plate must also be three types of vegetables, one type of starch, and one sauce, as well as a prepared garnish that will be appropriate to um, the, the chicken. Two cooking methods must be evident on the plate. One is to gratin, which is of course to, a, a, to get a brown crust, and then there's poaching. So that, uh, would, uh, that will assess the, the candidate's ability to control heat, because one is a very high heat, the other one is a very low heat. So you want to see how they control both those heat processes. But what they had to do first, the first half, first half of the event, they had to do, they had a skills test. And the skills test today was preparing two identical stuffed two egg omelets. And if you are close enough, you can see what the result was here. And that was the first. They haven't, the, the whole process of today is four hours, but the first half hour was um, the omelets, the skills test. And they had to prepare four omelets. And you can see here we have an example of all the omelets prepared by all the competitors. They're all stuffed. The stuffing of the omelet was of their choice. They, they, they chose what they want to stuff them with. So what the judges will be looking for is how you control your heat, 
how you did your folding, how you seasoned what you stuffed it with, and all those things that go along with the omelet. And if you, if you look, if, if the camera got any closer, you can see that they're all different colors, which tells you, well, yeah, the different temperatures were applied. And if you look even closer, you will see the color of the omelet itself. You will see an inconsistency in some of them, which again is an indication that it may not have been whipped properly before you actually start to um, cook it. So all these are techniques we talk about skills test. All these are the skills required to make a simple, what you may think is a simple omelet. But there's certain lots of skills required to make these omelets. So this is what the students were asked, or the competitors in this case, were asked to show off this morning in this section. So they have about approximately two hours and 24 minutes in which to complete now their four plates, which is the second part of the, um, the, con the tech contest today. Um, and they have, the, they have what is called an airline chicken breast. So the airline chicken breast is a full chicken breast with that first joint still attached. So they had to decide what they're going to do with it. They can do whatever they want. They can stuff it. They can flatten it out and fry it, whatever they want. But they must have on their description what exactly they did with that chicken breast. The cooking method used, and they were also given a mystery herb. So, and then the herb also must be included in what they are preparing today. It doesn't have to be in the chicken. It could be in the starch. It could be in the vegetables, it could even be in the sauce. But that herb that was given to them today will have to be included in the meal in some form. So it's a fairly challenging um, contest today, a very challenging um, assignment today. That one, that four plates, one protein, three starches, sorry, three vegetables, one starch, one sauce, and one garnish. All that in one plate. Two and, a half, two and a half hours to complete that assignment. They did the soup and the mise en place, that's getting everything in place and getting it to ready, get, getting it ready. Today they have the protein with a mystery herb. And the protein, of course, we said is chicken. And the mystery herb was, well, we, we gave them a choice, a chance to choose whatever herb. We have marjoram in there, thyme, parsley, and, 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 and basil, sweet basil. And they could choose whatever they want to, for, to, to end it there. And this, all part of it as well is the skills test today. The skills test today is making omelette. 
Now, if you can see here, if you look at them across the board, um, believe me, it is not as simple as it sounds. Making an omelette is the, the, lots of skill required to make an omelette. And if you look at the plates, you can tell if the skill level was met or, or not. Let's, we could, let's start looking at the color, for instance. If you look at each one of them, you can see there are different degrees of brown. Now, that tells the judge if your temperature was controlled while you were making that omelette. If you look at the ones that are really dark, now if I'm judging, I'm gonna say, well, okay, your, your heat was obviously too high because it is not supposed to go really dark like that. You look at this one here, for instance, this is a nice color. And, you was, and, uh, and, it, and look at the fluffy, it's folded and stuff like that. That's good. But then you can look closer to this, you can tell the faults are in it. You can tell now that it wasn't whipped properly because if you look closely, you can see that there it's inconsistent in color all the way through. You can see some white spots all in there. That's an indication that the eggs were not whipped properly. So the whites are not properly whipped into the yellow. So you're gonna get a variance in color. What you're looking for is a consistent color. You can get a better consistent color with this one. So if you look at this one, I can see, yeah, this has a much better color. It's a much better control in cooking and it's nice and rolled really well. Um, so that is good control of, of your cooking technique. And if you look inside, you can actually see your stuffing on the inside as well. It's supposed to be stuffed with cheese, and uh, stuff with cheese, basil, and mushrooms. And you can see them all present there. That's, this to me is, it would be a nice one here. And this one, a little too dark, and it's not evenly folded. This one, you can see even the, um, the, the, the filling is exposed on the outside. It's not an open omelet, so you should not have the filling being seen on the outside. And if you look at it, you can see it, it's, it's it'll be inconsistent in texture because here you can see it's very thin, which and so it's been overcooked a bit with the, with the edge like that, and then it's thicker in the inside. You can get an inconsistent texture all the way through. So all of these techniques that you're looking for, um, uh, all of these things are things that the um, competitors are expected to have control of when they get in this competition. As I said, it's a skills competition, not a look good, taste good competition, which, is, which we are accustomed to in Barbados. The plate that looks the best and tastes the best with any competition, not so here at all. You might have a plate that looks the best and it might even taste really, really well. But if you look at it closely, the skill that is required, the techniques that are required to execute your final product were not properly adhered to, as we can see in a, in a lot of these omelets over here. Right now there, so right now they're in the process of getting, the, um, going ahead with their preparation of the, the main plate. They have two hours and 17 minutes remaining in their main plate. They have to um, use that chicken breast. They were given the skeleton of the chicken as well, the frame of the chicken. And you can see, in this case, this guy is making a stock. They have to make a stock with that. And stock meaning you need to extract all the flavors from those bones to make the sauce that is required on the plate. So you have to prepare three vegetables, with the, well, along with the protein, um, one starch, and a sauce and a garnish. So that's where they're at right now. They're just about two and hours and 17 minutes to remain in to get this part of the meal finished. Now they could choose, they, they chose earlier whatever vegetables they're gonna use, whatever starch they're gonna use, and now they have to write the menu out for the judges because what you write on that menu is exactly what the judges will be looking for when it comes to the tasting part or the, or the testing part of it. So you're busy now trying to get themselves together, bearing in mind that time because if you finish late, your open window is five minutes before three and a half hours. That's when the window service window is open. That's when you're expected to start your service and you have 10 minutes after that if you're not finish in that 10 minutes, well then you're pretty much disqualified. So it is a really pressure time at this point. They're against the clock while trying to get the all, make sure all the skills and techniques. Oh, one, two things that are required is a gratin. Gratin is the, um, a, a browning on the top surface. So you can put cheese, you can put breadcrumbs, you can put whatever you want, but you have to, it, it, it's being exposed to intense heat to get that caramelization on the top. And the second cooking technique required is poaching. Which is, and it's low pressure poaching, low pressure poaching. So they have to poach something in there as well at very low temperature, that is below boiling point, 
Um, anywhere between 180, 190 degrees Fahrenheit is what they'll be cooking at, and they need to control that temperature very, very well. So what they're trying to ask, ask to do here today, control intense heat and control low heat. So cooking with both heats, exposure to both heats, high heat and low heat. And let's see how you're going to control both of them at the same time um, while trying to get the split completed. Come to the end of the stream this morning. You saw the cooking, hairdressing, fashion technology, graphic design skill competitions going on. We are going to resume this afternoon at 3.30. So stay tuned, join us, and support our young people. Goodbye. Shape our world.